somewhere in 2015, I went to an audio firm and I was very lucky to listen to the NAP 200 from Nime. What a sound! First designed by Nime Audio founder Julian Verriger in 1971. And the Nime 200 has established for Nime quite a legacy. As their first production amplifier, no single product encapsulates their philosophy better. This design is simple, but also very uncompromising. I promised to myself that if I ever win the lottery, I would definitely buy one. Unfortunately, the lottery I still haven't won. But the cool thing about low budget is that it drives creativity. A few moments later, I was checking out eBay. And to my surprise, I found a bare PCB that is quite similar to the NAP200. As an experiment, I tried to how far I could replicate the original in terms of topology and sound stage. The bare PCBs are still sold on eBay. They are complete kits, but also pre-sold just PCBs as well. I would definitely recommend to purchase the bare PCBs only. This is because sellers overseas have a reputable reputation when it comes to silicium. You can be quite lucky and get original parts, but it can also be a gamble. Lots of those chips are actually counterfeit. Yeah, that could result into disappointment. And bear also in mind that many sellers just sell the PCB without any support. The good thing however is that much information can be found online. So I tried to stick as close to the original as possible, and actually it's very well engineered. But also I improved where I could, or just used parts that I already had available. For example, the original transformer is 200 watts and mine is 500 watts. I also added DC projection, just in case. I left out the power supply for the pre-amplifier that is originally built in the amplifier. However, the bare PCB has the option, and it's up to you if you want to populate that part or not. I decided to not go for tantalum capacitors. Tantalum capacitors have excellent characteristics, but when one goes short, it burns vigorously. And that probably results in a burn down or broken uh, print. So most important are the coupling capacitors. And for that I put a very nice Fisché 10 microfarad capacitors. There is not really a strong consensus about the bias. However, most sources mention 5 millivolts. And I think that's about right. You could up it a little bit more if you want, uh, but it's not necessary. The original delivers about 70 watt per channel into an 8 ohm load. Mine comes very close to the 68 watt. And the clone is very stable into any load. It can even drive a 2 ohm load for long periods of time without any oscillations and even excellent square wave response. So, to sum up, it's actually quite incredible how such a low bias amplifier can still sound very snappy and dynamic. Even better, it makes the amplifier quite efficient in terms of power consumption and also relatively low cooling is needed. However, what I did do is add a 5mm thick aluminium, aluminium suite that I copied with a miter saw from the original PCB. And that I added as extra cooling. And also what is positive is that it enforces the cabinet a little bit more. So I hope you liked this video and I'm very curious how you think about this amplifier.